for today, and we're going to be practicing more derivatives. What? No, I'm anti-derivatives. Oh, okay then. We'll just do some anti-derivatives today. I want our old teacher back, Miss McCullough, not you, sub. Oh, come on. It'll be easy. We're just going to review the basics. Okay, class. So, antiderivatives are basically just the opposite of derivatives. So, we're just going to do a different procedure, like the opposite procedure. Okay. So, get over here, class. Um, so, this is how the setup for antiderivatives are. So, what we want to do is we want to take 2x and we want to raise the power of x by 1. So, it's already at 2x to the 1. So we're going to raise it to 2x to the 2. So add 1 to the power. And then we're going to multiply this by the reciprocal of the power we just raised it to. So 2. So we're going to multiply it by 1 half. And then we're just going to simplify. So we, the 2's cancel. And then we are left with x squared plus c. We always have to have plus c when we're doing antiderivatives because it's a constant. And we have to recognize that there could be a constant there, even though we don't know exactly what the constant is. Now, the answer is x squared plus c. And if we want to just check if our answer is correct, then we could just find the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. And we see, ta-da, it's the same. So therefore, you can always know if you're doing antiderivatives right. OK, that was pretty easy. Good, that's awesome. Now we're gonna learn about you sub. What? I don't wanna learn about you sub. Your life just seems kind of boring. Morgan, I wasn't talking about learning about me. You sub is used in antiderivative problems. Okay, class, let's do an example problem. Get over here. All right, now I know this looks scary, but we're just gonna work through it step by step. All right, so first we have to establish what our u is going to be. Now, we want our u, the derivative of our u, to be something already in the equation. So we can kind of tell that this should be our u because, one, it's inside um, a square root, and also it could potentially get us x squared. So we're going to set our u equal to x cubed plus 8, and then we're going to find the derivative. So du equals, we're going to bring the 3 to the front, so 3x, and then go down a power, squared, dx, all right. And then, see, we, we see that we have a 3x squared, so we want to take the 3 out, so we're going to say 1 third du equals x squared, because we only want x squared, because x squared is right there. Now, this problem has a 6x squared, and we only have an x squared, so what we're just going to do is we're going to take the 6 out, and change the equation to this. All right. So now we have we have x squared and x squared. So perfect. We have everything we need. So we're just gonna say one third times six equals or no sorry times um one over the square root of u d u. All right, so now we're just going to find the antiderivative. So, u to the negative 1 half. What do we do, class? We're going to raise it by 1. So, u to the 1 half. We added 1. Add 2 over 2 equals positive 1 half. And then multiply the by the reciprocal. So, 2. Then, we're left with this. And what's u? We're going to substitute u. Put it in there. So 2 times x cubed plus 8 to the 1 half. And do not forget this 6 over 3, which turns into 2. So we multiply by 2. We get 4 times x cubed plus 8 to the 1 half. And what do we never forget, class? Plus C. And there we have it. It's our answer. Okay, Morgan, now let's have you try a problem. 
Okay. What's your first step? So I take x and I add 1 to the exponent and I bring the 3 down and multiply by the reciprocal of that power, which is 1 7th. Then I add the antiderivative of e to the 2x, but I don't know how to do that. Use u sub. Oh, okay. U would equal 2x, so du would equal 2. But there isn't a 2, so we need to take that out. Good. Giving you 1 half in front. So it would be 1 half e to the 2x plus c. Yes, because the antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u. So you just plug it back in. Perfect. Good job. It's time for trick No! What is the antiderivative of sine? Negative cosine. All right. Um, and, now, and then we're going to bring the 4x down. And then we're going to multiply it by the reciprocal of the 4x. So times by 1 fourth. And then we just simplify it. So we end with negative 1 fourth cosine 4x plus c. This is so dumb. What even is ln? Did we even learn ln? Why is she doing this? Morgan, could you stop going off on a tangent? Dang it, how did she even hear me? She's all the way across the classroom. I hear everything, Morgan. And also, I believe one of the words you just said deserves push-ups. <laughs> oh man. One, two, 98, 99, 100. Ugh. Wow, that was impressive, Morgan. However, you could have stopped at 10. You let me do 100 push-ups? Well, if you wouldn't have gone off on a tangent in class. What's going off on a tangent mean? Going off on a tangent is the derivative of the original conversation. Hmm. I don't like my current girlfriend. Mind if I do a... You substitution? <laughs> I mean, only if you tell me a joke. What's the first derivative of a cow? I don't know, what? Prime rib. Oh my gosh, I'm vegetarian, are you kidding? Sign. John! That was really good. That is the antiderivative of negative cosine, except you did forget the plus C. Now remember kids, don't drink and derive this weekend.